Will this device change how we keep aquarium fish in the freshwater hobby? That is the question I want to answer for you guys today. Hello my friends and welcome to Fishery. I'm Alex Williamson and today we are going to be talking about a brand new product that's out on the market. In fact, they actually are having a wireless version coming out soon too. Hope I didn't spill the beans on that. But for a hundred dollars, there is a unit that tells you your pH, your total dissolved solids in parts per million, your temperature, your salinity, your conductivity, and your specific gravity, all in one little unit that has a nice color LED in real time. Now, this thing runs $100. Can they make a unit that's any good for $100? Or does it just, you know, uncalibrate and become kind of pointless? like units in the past that I've seen. We're going to talk about all of that and more and whether I recommend this unit. Uh, if you're an aquarist, if you're just a, a normal aquarist, is this useful? Or is it kind of for your hardcore aquarist, for saltwater, for freshwater? I'm going to bury the lead and tell you that actually I found it very useful to have this information for freshwater. But there's a lot more details I want to tell you about this little unit. So let's jump in right now and take a look at the Cactoily 6-in-1 unit. All right, so first off the bat, the name of the thing, as we said, Cactoily. Uh, lots of umlauts over that. Uh, don't know why. If you're supposed to say it, Cactoily. It's not important. But this thing works uh this is the brains of the contraption and where the power is plugged in whereas then it has a cord and it comes with two different lengths this is the shorter one so for a, a shallow like this is a 20 long uh, aquarium you can use the shorter cord you can use a longer cord if you've got like a 180 or something but then the sensor unit is going to be this black box that hangs on the inside and uh, attaches by suction cup. Now you can attach it with suction cup or magnet. It gives you a couple different options when you uh, first get the unit. And uh, the back of the control panel part comes with these metal tags. They don't stick super well long term just because of the humidity, I think. But you could super glue it onto your glass if you really wanted to keep it in one spot. Or you can just switch it out with a suction cup, which is what I'm going to do in the long run after I show you guys uh, this product. Now, I do want to say that uh, when I reviewed this product or when I got a hold of this product, I told the folks, hey, I, uh, I want to be able to you know, say my real opinion. I'm not gonna, you know, just give it a good review because, you know, you're giving me something free. Uh, and they said, that's fine. Just all we ask is you share the link, uh, the affiliate link, uh, which means I get a little cut of it. So I do have a bias guys. Um, but I think if you are a hardcore fish keeper, if you're someone who likes to breed, especially like I'm trying to breed right now, uh, these pencil fish, I'm conditioning them as well as these hovering loaches, which I've successfully bred now. There's a big swollen pregnant female, by the way, uh, and there's a male. And, uh, you know, if you're trying to figure out things like what pH do they spawn at? Uh, how low do I need to take it? This unit will tell you in real time right here the pH of your water. And we'll put it on another tank so I can show you. But this thing so far in four months has not needed calibration, which is also really impressive. So it has, uh, and I undid the suction cups because we're going to move it, but this normally sits flush uh, on the unit right here against the glass. You can put it in the corner, you can put it in the center. I think it makes most sense to keep it near where your water's flowing just because that, that's where the movement is and it'll bring anything like uh, dissolved solids from you know other parts of the tank. It'll, it'll have the most uh, evenly distributed results rather than some corner where there might be uh, not as much current and the water may settle a little bit more. But uh, you can see here that right now my tank is just under 75 degrees. This tank has no heater in it right now. It's just got a sponge, <clears throat> uh, sponge filter in it and uh, a whole lot of tannins. Now, another thing that's really interesting, so we'll talk about the other things this tells you and 
So you may wonder, like, why would a fresh, why would a freshwater aquarist need this? Like, saltwater aquariums usually spend five, six hundred dollars on these kind of meters and things uh, in, in the recent past and uh, present. But why would a freshwater aquarist want one of these? And for me, one, it's really interesting for if you're doing an experiment, like trying to find out how many lotus pods uh, in a 20-gallon tank does it take to drop the pH 0.2 points or, you know, whatever it may be. How much does dri a chunk of driftwood, a one pound of driftwood, drop the, the pH? So it's really useful for stuff like that. You get in real-time results. But you need your baseline. And what's interesting is, and I knew it when I thought about it, but it really uh, hit home is that your pH changes from the day to the night. So when it's been on, uh, the light's been on in your tank, and I've got a Fluval 3.0 light on here, uh, so it has a decent amount of power, that causes your plants to release oxygen. And that oxygen is being released, and photosynthesis is going on, and everything's happy and dandy, and the fish can breathe really well, and uh, life is great, right? Well, at night, your plants then are converting that uh, photosynthetic energy they've stored into other uh, uses for storage, as well as uh, getting rid of CO2. So they get rid of CO2 gas. That's why if you have CO2 in your tank, uh, you don't want to run it at night because it's going to be double the CO2 or triple or, you know, it just depends on how much pressurized CO2 you're running. But that is why you don't want to run CO2 at night. And CO2 directly impacts the pH because the carbon on the CO2, the, the C, actually turns into carbonic acid over time in your aquarium. And that's over, uh, I don't know how quickly it occurs, but I know within about an hour or two, this will drop down to around 6.6, 6.7 every night. So it's actually a pretty big shift, and that's something kind of interesting to note, especially if you're keeping species that are really sensitive. So maybe you have a hard time getting your water uh, soft, and you're really trying to get it acidic, and so you're really trying to keep it under that 7.0. You're trying to keep it acidic, not neutral. Or maybe you're trying to keep it neutral, or maybe you're trying to keep it hard for guppies, or for shellies, uh, shell dwellers, you know, or, or some sort of cichlid. And that's when this all comes in handy. So this tells you the parts per million, the TDS. This has been spot on with my two TDS meters uh, for all four months I've had the unit. Uh, also then it gives you uh, the, uh, the resistance or conductivity in the water, gives you the salinity, and it, it gives you uh, the, the actual gravity of the water. Plus, again, I said uh, temperature and you can change that, and that's all great. So those are things that for a hundred bucks, I think it's a pretty good deal because normally you would spend, you know, uh, maybe 20 bucks, 15 bucks on a TDS meter, uh, and then, you know, if you want to do the pH testing, you've got like the little reagent uh, thing, but you're probably going to buy all the nit uh, nitrites, nitrates, um, maybe GH and KH, and with this, you can deduce GH and KH somewhat just by knowing your TDS. I mean, you, you can kind of approximate how things are going, know if the water's hard or soft. So you still probably want to buy those reagents, but this allows you a lot of uh, real-time data. So you can understand, oh, did I add, uh, you know, a stone that had quite a bit of uh, calcite or something uh, that reacted in an acidic tank over time and it's, you know, releasing it and the, the water's getting harder or a silt stone or something like that. Um, you know, if you have shrimp, if you you have new substrates or if you're comparing tanks, if you know your tap water's the, you know, the consistent thing. Uh, consistent data point through things then you can say all right well this this affects the the tap water this much and you can write that down and record it which is pretty cool for you know experiments and dialing things in so a lot of fish uh, especially that are from uh, really black tannic water 
will not breed unless the TDS is pretty low, like maybe even 50 or 100, and the pH is also low. So sometimes you might have water that's really hard. So let's move this thing, and I'll talk a little bit more about tuning it as well, um, because I thought I'd be tuning and calibrating this thing constantly. But let's pop it onto another tank in real time. Let's see what happens. It does take a minute or two, uh, and by that I mean maybe 10 or 15, to fully sink in what's going to happen. But you can see this water's harder. The TDS, the parts per million, went up, and it's more acidic. You can see 7.0 is where it's at right now and it'll settle down like I said within a half hour on this tank it'll settle down but this tank is is uh, different parameters obviously and has different fish has uh, kind of an assortment of an angelfish that doesn't get along with anybody some garamis that are just chilling and some tetras uh, but in this tank uh, you can see it's warmer also 78.6 so I just wanted to show you that this stuff is all working in real time. The salinity is about the same. Uh, you know, the conductivity is the same. And that this stuff, it's actually all how the, the, the parts per million of total dissolved solids is all deduced from the conductivity in the water. So it's not really six data points that it, it's giving you. You could calculate that on your own but it's nice to have it in real time i'm lazy i didn't even know that before i got this unit and uh yeah it's it's just nice to have that functionality and this thing while not waterproof i've definitely gotten a lot of splashes of water on it and it's pretty well constructed i have to say that in four months no leaking or anything the the panel stayed nice and bright it's got a year warranty on it which is always nice to hear and a 30 days satisfaction guaranteed you can return it for any reason when you get it it's shipped to you for free so all those things i like about the company and those are like good signs in my mind those are that's all stuff that in my mind tells me this company's serious about creating a quality product even though they're new to the scene but for a hundred dollars it's pretty cool you don't want to be moving it from tank to tank like i just did i was just trying to show you some different numbers on here and show you how it reacts in real time but this will in the next 15 minutes settle back down yet yeah, it's already back to 0.02 and it should go up to you know 0.7.2 or so again and i think we were at 225 before so it's starting to go back up um but you know it'll calibrate itself pretty well even so though they give you a calibrating solution uh, so that you can do that yourself if you want. You can also reset factory settings and zero everything out so it doesn't have a bias. Or if you find that your unit for some reason, um, you know, maybe your TDS, it's for some reason reading 50% off for some reason, um, just because the probe's getting older, you can actually go in and select in the menu, you can select any one of the functions and you can then go in there and you can um, add or, or, or subtract uh, units from it, which I think is pretty cool too. And then the actual unit itself that has the sensors, let's see if we can see it all right in this light of the shrimp tank. I think this would be nice for shrimp breeders or caradina breeders, but there's an optical sensor here and then there's two platinum uh studs or or little antennae probes i guess is the term that that uh send a signal through the water and uh one probe receives one sends and then there's also a, a another uh signal that gets read in there as well and then there's just these little pinholes if we can hold it up to the light let's see here these little pinholes that water goes through um that that uh, the sensor works through other than the two sensors at the bottom so you can put it wherever you want you can hide it in the back of your tank and just check it every once in a while uh, apparently there is a new model coming out i don't know if i'm allowed to share this info but i'm going to that's wireless and that will send this to a 
computer, and I'm assuming that gives you all sorts of software options in the future to graph and track what's going on. But for me, in any black water tank or any hard tank with like cichlids in it, since I have soft water for out of the tap, any tank where I'm really changing my parameters a lot, I would consider getting one of these. I mean, I really would. I, I probably wouldn't have more than two or three in the whole fish room personally, just because I don't have hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But for a hundred bucks, this thing really does tell you a lot. It stayed accurate in all the parameters for four months. Now, that being said, they still give you three packets of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, basically, it gives you three packets and each packet you put into water and then you put the probe in and it gives you a readout and you hit a calibrate button and then you put it into a more acidic version, hit calibrate when it hits that number and it, you calibrate it that way, just like you would uh, anything that reads pH uh, that's a digital testing device. Also, the cool thing about this unit is you can replace all the probes. So they all slide out and you can just take them out. They unscrew. Uh, just like this here and so if you need to replace it you can and they sell those parts but you have a year warranty on it to be working properly so hopefully within a year it doesn't go bad so far in four months I'm amazed that it hasn't drifted I thought these numbers would all be off but see here we are almost right where we were when we began and that's with me switching it on tanks now I have learned that if you switch it on tanks that are too different to extreme it will start to drift so you don't want to be moving it all around the fish room it really is kind of for one tank but if you leave it on one tank it really does stay pretty accurate which really surprised me especially at the price point so i would say if you're your average uh one community tank aquarium it's not going to be super useful for you it might be interesting but if you're doing an aqua state if you're doing dealing with co2 um this is a little more finesse and control than just the little indicator fluid plus it gives you temperature plus um you know if you're breeding any sort of rare fish or hard water soft water fish any difficult fish to breed this can give you some pretty good feedback, uh, even though, you know, uh, there are products that will text your phone and things like that, and their next generation may do so. Um, we'll just have to see. Uh, but, you know, maybe hold off and buy that product when it comes out on their website, uh, if you're interested in that. But for me, this is fine. This actually, I like this, that it's self-contained, that I don't have to deal with the program on my phone, that I can do it all right here. I actually kind of like that. Uh, it's it's nice. At first I thought, what do you mean it's not all through my phone on Bluetooth? Well, you know, I guess enough people wanted that that they're going to be coming out with that. But for now, I really do like this unit. And even though I'd never heard of this company, I'm pretty darn impressed because I'm tough on stuff. And four months isn't a super long time to have uh, anything in your fish room. That's for sure. But I can tell you that in the past when I've had pH meters that are digital, in fact, the ones that I've used to check this against that I borrowed from a friend a few different times, and then uh, the, the reagents, I'm checking the reagent test kit because the little digital handheld ones drift so often that you're almost calibrating them every time or every other time you're using the thing. The only uh, other parameters I really wish this had were ammonia and maybe like total dissolved oxygen or something like that. Um, I think those would be useful or nitrates, nitrites, you know, but th th that gets a lot harder to do. Um, and that's a lot more specific gear. But overall, I would say if you're breeding hard to breed freshwater fish, if you're, if you have a reef tank, like a little nano reef tank or something, this is a really good affordable option to give you control and information and feedback over what is going on in your tanks and if you're the kind of person who likes to do experiments you're testing out new botanicals new types of wood new stone whatever and you want to know how like to make a nature tank for instance uh where you're going to drop the ph x amount from neutral uh from your tap water or drop the pH or raise the pH 
uh, or the TDS you want to increase, this is a really useful real-time tool that gives you uh, information right away. And uh, you can turn the light off too if you don't want it being backlit and you don't want to see it uh, in, in the uh, fish room or on your tank. You can put it on the back of your tank, whatever. But I think it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool tool. And I could actually see when I had more stem plants in here, the carbon dioxide output was way more. So it's, the swing was way farther. So me knowing that I don't want that to swing as much, I took out most of the stem plants in this tank. And other than a little bit of kabamba and some guppy grass, now I'm sticking with some hair grasses, some nacea, and uh, some lilies and saswasser tang that are all kind of slower growing uh, plants to condition these darter tetras, these uh, arc pencil fish, and these hovering loaches. There's a big nice pregnant female that just darted into the background. There's another pregnant female right there. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty useful for me. What do you guys think? Let me know the truth. Uh, also, do you guys mind when I do these review videos? If you want to pick this up, get a discount. Get the discount in the description. Get the free shipping. And uh, also, I get a little kickback for my channel. I think it's like 5% uh, of the profit. So, um, yeah, if, if you decide this is for you, then great. Uh, if it's something you don't need or you just are fine doing things the way you've always done them, then no worries, but I've really enjoyed it, and I think I'm actually going to get probably two more of these uh, when I can afford to do so. So, thanks for watching, you guys. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys, that's the unit, and that's what I thought of it. Now, I, I thought it was pretty good for $100, no shipping, the year-long warranty. Now, I only had it for four months, and I'm not really in the business of pushing a product and selling things a whole lot on here. I do get an affiliate link, so that is a bias uh, that I may have. So you should know that. Uh, but honestly, I think I'm going to try to get another, uh, the wireless one probably when that comes out. And then also probably one more of just this kind. Uh, if they stay at 100 bucks. I think it's a really solid unit. It hasn't drifted at all for calibration concerns in four months, which my other units need recalibration every one to three uses to test pH. So if you guys are interested in this, uh, there's a link obviously in the description uh, to where to get it and to get a discount if you use the code. Uh, and then also, um, you know, let me know what you'd like a sensor like this to do in the future because this company wants feedback. I'd like oxygen, maybe ammonia or nitrates. Uh, I know those are tall orders, but oxygen might be more doable. Um, you know, that's what I'd like in it. But what would you like to see in a sensor like this? And what are your thoughts on this? Maybe you're a saltwater fish keeper and uh, you have more experience with this kind of tech stuff. Uh, but I think it's cool for freshwater too, especially if you're really into biotopes, you're into botanicals or breeding fish, then I think you'll find a lot of use for it. Whereas if you just have a community tank, it's kind of interesting, but probably not for you, probably not, you know, what you're going to be interested in. But if you like this video, you like this kind of video, leave a thumbs up, chat with me in the comments, let's have a discussion. And as always, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.